Welcome back to Ion Fox Pro. I'm Chris Mason here with Mark Daniels. Mark, school vacation week, man. How you doing? I'm surviving, Chris. It's all about adapting and surviving. You take advantage when you're a parent of you know the school days and they're gone from eight to three. It's it's easy to work from home when no one's home, but it's it's more difficult. It's more challenging when you have children are running around and screaming, man. But you know it's it's entertaining and um say so, you know what though. Having kids home on school vacation week is entertaining, but not as entertaining as this Patriots off season is about to get. Um, it's things are going to start ramping up here. That was a big money segue right now. Yep. So you've put together a list for me. I'm going in totally blind of Patriots that could end up as cap casualties because right now they have $66 million in cap space. They can easily get that to 80 with one move and they can keep going beyond that. I know the one move. I don't know the other ones. You've put this list together. So do you want to play a little game with this guy? Let's do it, man. So Patriots head into this offseason. Right now, they're actually they have the fourth most cap space. And they were the they were the third, but the Bears cut a couple veterans, moved them up. The Patriots are going to make moves here to clear cap space. There's a real obvious one. Chris knows this one. So we're going to start at the top here. Chris, JC Jackson, if the Patriots keep him on his current deal. He'll have a cap hit of $14.375 million. However, $0 are guaranteed. So, Chris, would you keep J.C. Jackson at his $14 million salary, or would you just clear $14 million before free agency? Drum roll. I would clear $14 million before free agency, take, like, the free space in the middle of the bingo board there and go from there. I mean, that easily, I mean, the value is just not there. And if you want to bring J.C. back on a, like, much, much cheaper deal, you can talk to him after the fact. Um, and see how his free agency materializes. But I think it would be crazy to have him at $14 million for next season. It would be insane. So you clear up $14 million on the 66. That gives them 66 plus 14 tells me is $80 million. That would give them right now the most cap space in the NFL. So I, I think you're on that, Chris. I wouldn't be surprised any day now if J.C. Jackson was cut. I mean, if, if the new it all depends on how Gerard Mayo feels. If they want to work with him, yeah, maybe you can work on a one-year prove-it deal. Mm -hmm. A lot has to happen, though, for J.C. Jackson to be a productive NFL player. Had some mental health issues a year ago. So, as Chris said, pretty easy call here. The Patriots are going to cut or maybe restructure J.C. Jackson. So now, the Patriots, I identified eight players the Patriots could theoretically cut before June 1st to save some cap space. Some obvious names in the air, some so not obvious names. So, I'm going to start at the top. The top was J.C. Jackson of $14 million. Number two, the Patriots could clear Chris. $8.3 million in cap space if they cut Devon Godchow. So Devon Godchow currently will have an $11.8 million cap, cap hit. That's a lot for a talented defensive tackle. So if you cut him, 8.3 comes off your cap. You are hit, though, with a $3.5 million dead cap hit. I would not cut him. I think their run defense was really, really good last year. He is the focal point of that. He is a very good player. Like he flies under the radar. He's probably one of the five best players on the roster right now. You don't make your team better by cutting good players. And so I would keep Godshaw and let him play. It'd be one thing if you were in a terrible, if you were in cap hell, right? And you needed to find a way yeah. to get back to like zero. But I mean, when you're already at 80 million after the JC move, I don't see a ton of sense in cutting Godshaw there. I agree. I really like Devon Godshaw and Christian Barmore. That's a nice little core to have, at yep. least for the short term. Because if you cut him, then you're relying on Lawrence Guy, who's 33 years old. And you're not you're not going to do that. You're not going to create another hole in your defense just to add more players and free agency. So I, I agree. That's that's an easy one. Here's here's another interesting one. And it's David Andrews. David Andrews goes into next season with an eight point four million dollar cap hit. If the Patriots were to release their captain, they would clear up six point five million dollars. And cap, it's cap space, and they would only be hit with a $1.9 million dead cap hit. David Andrews, what, about to turn 34, one year left on his contract, over $8 million. Chris, would you keep him, or would you look to clear the $6.5 million and roll with Jake Andrews at your center? There is no chance in hell that I'm cutting David Andrews for a few reasons. One, he's still playing at a very high level. Two, he's super important to the locker room. Like, that is a well-earned captainship. He's basically, like a case study in how to succeed in New England, you know, comes in as an undrafted guy, just works his ass off, becomes a starting center, earns the respect of his teammates. And so reason three is I think it would send a horrible message to your locker room if you cut him just for like superfluous bookkeeping. You know, it's like, why, why would you do that? So I do yeah. not think that makes your team any better. And I would not cut David Andrews. 
I agree 100 percent. I mean, the Patriots are clearly clearly going to revamp their quarterback position. It wouldn't be surprising to either of us if they draft a rookie quarterback. Don't you want David Andrews working with a rookie quarterback? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would be shocked and really dismayed if they were to cut David Andrews. I mean, it wouldn't surprise us, Chris, if Matthew Slater retired. You're losing a huge captain there, a huge voice in the locker room. But you have one on offense already in David Andrews. I mean, $6.5 million, sure, you could probably get a nice player. But you're not going to get someone like David Andrews for $6.5 million. I'm there with you. So here's another captain. He's on the defensive end, defensive side. And he is a defensive end. His name is Dietrich Wise. We love Dietrich Wise. He's a, he's a really nice guy. He's a good, steady player. You know, not elite, but he's solid. Next year, his cap hit is $7.64 million. If the Patriots were to cut him, they would free up $5.4 million in cap space and be hit, and be hit with $2.2 million in dead cap. Interesting move here, Chris. Would you keep Dietrich Wise at his $7.64 million salary, or would you look to move him and free up a little over, almost $5.5 million? I would keep him. Um, I think what he does is so underappreciated by and large, just because like barring last season, he really doesn't come through with huge sack numbers on the defensive end, but he just is so good at setting the edge. And it's another person that's really important in the run defense. It'll be interesting to see how Mayo feels about him because Bill obviously loved wise. You know, I think if Bill had his way, he would have a wise on both defensive end, right? Just a reliable, steady, set the edge, force everything inside. But again, I think he's a good player. I think he's a leader. And I do think that, like, with Slater potentially retiring, you lost McCourty last year. Mac Jones is a captain who's not going to be a captain again next year. I don't think you want to just take a sledgehammer to your captain room for no reason. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, one day it wouldn't surprise me if Keon White replaces Dietrich Wise in the starting lineup. But until Keon White develops, you don't want to you don't want to cut a solid veteran player who is well liked and, and a good leader. You know, Dietrich Wise in 2022 had seven and a half sacks career high. That was down a bit last year. But listen, he's a he's a solid player, a great guy to have in the locker room. And as you usher in a new era, as you said, with Gerard Mayo, I think that you're going to want to keep some of these good, solid pieces around like you don't. You don't want to make your defense any worse when you're trying to build up your offense. And now it wouldn't surprise us to say if like the Pats lose, say, Josh Uche or Kyle Duggar in free agency. That's why you need to keep guys like Dietrich Wise around. So this next one is, Adri is Adrian Phillips. Adrian Phillips is, is a great guy, Chris. You know, he someone you could argue is like a de facto captain, special teams ace. He was a starting safety up until last season. So now next year, last year in his contract, he's about to be account for almost 4.2 million on the cap. If you release him, you clear up $3 million in your hit with only $1.1 million in dead cap space. Adrian, Adrian Phillips, Chris, are you paying him a little over $4 million to be in your roster next year? This is probably the toughest one so far. And I think a lot of it is going to have to do with what happens with Kyle Duggar, right? Like if you lose Duggar, do you want to lose your insurance at safety there? Because you're probably going to lose Jalen Mills too. Um, so it's it's a much tougher call. And again, like how ready do you feel like Marte Mapu is? Like, has he earned more snaps? Should he be on the field more? Ultimately, I can I can I punt on this one? Can I wait and see or do I have to do I have to choose right now? Like how how does this how does this game work? Well, I would say I choose right now. And, it, and I, you, you could pause for a second. If it's me, Adrian Phillips is 32. He really didn't play on defense in, this, in most of the last season. Actually, he was more of a core special special teamer. And for that reason, I would cut him slash I would, you know, asterisks here. I would bring him back on a new deal. I, I don't know if any yeah. team would pay, you know, Adrian Phillips $4 million. So I agree with you. I think he deserves a spot on the roster, but not at $4 million. So if it was me right now, I would cut Adrian Phillips with, um, you know, try to bring him back or essentially restructure, which is what you could also opt to do. Yeah, that that's my move there. We're, we're going with the haircut, you know, try and bring him back after the fact. But yeah, four, four million for someone that just wasn't playing on defense last year. And it was one of those like, is he just blocked there by other players or has he lost a step? Either way, at four million, uh, I don't like that number. I agree. And, and this next guy sort of falls into a similar category. His name's Lawrence Guy. Last year in his deal, $3.5 million for a 33-year-old defensive tackle. Only 500000 is guaranteed. So if you were to cut Lawrence Guy, Chris, you would free up $3 million in cap space. He's getting up there in age. He is still playing. I, I think it's an interesting decision for the Patriots. Do you keep Lawrence Guy for $3.5 million, or do you cut him and spend that money elsewhere? So I don't think it's as much about Guy as a, I, I mean, I think he's still playing at a fine level right now, 
But by cutting him, do you give more snaps to Keon White, Christian Barmore, and like the next wave of guys? Hey, maybe you draft another guy this year who's young and you want to plug in there. I think I move on from Lawrence Guy at that number. And especially after I've already kept Dietrich and Godshaw in here, I still feel good about the run defense with those two in the fold. But I, I think I'd probably cut him and take take that money, reallocate somewhere else, and take those snaps and give it to younger players. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you were to cut JC Jackson, Adrian Phillips, and Lawrence Guy, you're you're creating over 20 million in cap space. That's that's a lot. Like that, that's a ton. And the Patriots have a ton of holes. So I, I think they could move on from Lawrence Guy and you know and fill his spot elsewhere, maybe draft a defensive tackle on, on day three, something like that. But I, I agree with you. I like Lawrence Guy. He's a nice guy. I mean, maybe you bring him back in like a veteran minimum deal, but I, I think at this rate, you know, maybe you reallocate that money to to the offensive end and, and try to, you know. Throw Definitely. some money, whether it be the tackle, receiver, or quarterback position. Look, and I don't think it's a coincidence that thus far we have three consensus cuts, and they're all on the defensive side of the ball. So, like, reallocate that to offense. That is where you need it. That is where you need the help. Like, definitely take that money and spend it on the offensive side of the ball. And here's another name, and he is a veteran. He was only here for one year. His name's Chris Board. His cap hit next year would be just about $2.9 million. This is a core special teamer. Not much of that is guaranteed, really. You could free up almost $2 million by cutting Chris Board. He finished second on the team in special teams tackles, Chris. But for me, it'll be interesting to see with Gerard Mayo leading the way, how much do they prioritize special teams and how much do they pri prioritize, you know, paying these core special teamers? So would you free up $2 million for Chris Board or, you know, do you, uh, you cut him? So my gut instinct is to say, yeah, I cut him at that number. Like why, why do that given what, like, his performance last year essentially but then like if you're losing matthew slater to retirement which i think we both assume is going to happen do you need a core special teamer like I, you're still gonna have brendan schooler do you need to spend that money on another one ultimately i'm still going with the gut here i, I think you cut him and you move on what do you think yeah i i agree i, I think I think you cut them because I, I think you can find cheaper options to be core special teamers. And the truth is this, the Patriots had a lot of, a lot of core special teamers last year, Chris, and they weren't very good on special teams. No, they were not. You know, like Chris Board had some decent numbers as a special teamer, but he just never really stuck out to me. I mean, Bill Belichick once said that he was one of the best in the league and, and maybe he was at one point in time, but I think to allocate almost $3 million towards a core special team linebacker, I don't love it. I, I think the Patriots should usher in a new era where they have, yes, a couple core special teamers, but you don't need seven of them on your roster. The, the Patriots have way too many holes, I think, to pay Chris Board almost $3 million. So I'm with you on this this one. And and the and it, it, it's also just like someone like Marte Mapu, right? Who's supposed right. to be a, like hyper intelligent player, like defense line, like linebacker, safety, all that. Like, why can't he be a core special teamer? You know, that seems like something he'd be really good at and well suited for. So why not slide him into the Chris Board spot? And I was really looking hard to find one more. It's hard. The Patriots, as you, if people are listening to this, the Patriots don't have obvious cuts. There's, there's a couple, but we're starting to get a bit nitpicky. And the, I'm going to do one more pre-June 1st cut for Chris. And it's Daniel Oquale, who injured most of last season. Stoddy, solid rotational defensive tackle. I like Oquale. But the truth is this. he doesn't. Have, his cap hit isn't even that much. It's almost $1.7 you could free up 1.4 million by cutting him. So the question is, do you keep Daniel Aquale at 1.7 million or do you cut him looking to sign someone else at the veteran minimum and, and come aboard your roster? I keep him at that number. Um, I think his skill set's a little different where he's a better pass rusher. And also if I'm cutting Lawrence guy, I don't, I don't feel a need to cut a second defensive tackle too, you know? Um, right. So I, I think with his skill set, He'd been playing well before the injury, too. Like, I, I think that that's when you're getting just a little too nitpicky. And, like, if he doesn't make the roster out of camp or whatever, and you post-June first cut him, it's not the end of the world either. Like, you'll have that money back on the books eventually. I mean, I know, obviously, you can't spend that in free agency. But either way, you're, you're getting the money back, and it's going to be off the books moving forward. But I, I like his skill set. I wouldn't do that just uh, at, you know, that number for that savings. Right. So and for those who don't know, you can cut a player June 1st or designate them a post June 1st cut. The NFL contracts are just really complicated. Essentially, the salary cup cap numbers and in terms of what you save, it changes after June 1st. So the Patriots have what I think are three candidates for this. And I'm going to throw these at Chris. And the first we're going to start with Calvin Anderson. Calvin Anderson was signed to a two year, seven million dollar contract. I would be surprised if the Patriots 
cut him pre June first, Chris, because you only saved one point five million. Now his cap hit, if you keep him on the roster, is three point five. And you say, all right, backup swing tackle, maybe. Mm -hmm. Calvin Anderson, age twenty eight, is also coming off a season ending illness, and he hasn't played a lot of football. So post June first cut. Calvin Anderson, you would actually save $2.75 million, and you're only hit with a dead cap of about 850000 I think that leaves the Patriots with a lot to think about. You could theoretically cut Calvin Anderson in the spring, designate him for a post-June first cut, and you save almost $3 million. So do you ride it out, Chris, with Calvin Anderson, see how he looks this summer? You could always cut him at the end of training camp, or do you try to free up that cap space a little sooner? Oh, I'm riding it out with him. Absolutely. Um, I think they are so, so thin at tackle. And he's someone obviously last year did not go well for him with the injury. And it, like he had missed all summer before, got in for a couple of games, injuries back. It, it didn't look good. If he's healthy and good to go, I'd give him a full summer, see what he can do. Because I think you are so thin at that position that you're just shooting yourself in the foot. If you have someone who's proven to be a swing tackle at the NFL level already, and you just cut him like for a little more bookkeeping when you're already into the i mean if you had that 20 million that we already have we're up to what like 80 86 million in cap space already you know i i don't think that the additional 2 million is really going to be a game changer i agree and if you look at the free agent tackles who are available man it is ugly it's bad. It's, it's really bad. I've been trying to come up with five. Um, you can read the five I pick to, uh, on Mass Live on Tuesday morning, but it, it is not pretty, folks. So, like, I would keep Calvin Anderson at his $3 million something cap hit. I, I just think, you're, as Chris said, he has started a left tackle. He started a right tackle. You have a veteran there. You have an option. It's better than not having it. But the Pats' depth at tackle, I would say, is putrid. You don't want to make it worse. And there are two more names, Chris, I, I do want to talk about. And I think they're players that Patriots fans would like to be see cut. Their names are Juju Smith-Schuster and Devontae Parker. The issues are here. With the contracts the Patriots gave him, it makes it almost impossible to cut him. So let's start with Juju Smith-Schuster. If you were to cut him pre-June 1st, you owe $12.2 million and you save nothing. I mean, it makes zero sense to cut Juju Smith-Schuster. If you cut him post-June 1st, you still owe $9.6 million, Chris, but you only free up $600,000. And at that case, I'm going to sit, sit there and say it. They're not tr they're not cutting Juju Smith Schuster. It doesn't make sense to you know wrap yourself up in ten million dollars in dead cap hit. But if they could trade him, it's the only way really for the Patriots to get out of the contract. So if they were to trade him, say in two weeks, pre June first, they would free up around five million, and they would owe around five million. I think that's really doable. If you trade him post June first, you actually save seven point six million on the cap. This year and 7.5 million in 2025, you only owe 2.6 million. So, Chris, do you think there's a team out there that would acquire a Juju Smith Schuster for, say, like a seventh round pick? And the only reason you do it for the Patriots is to clear up this cap space. And really, it would probably happen after June 1st, right? You you clear 7.6 million off the cap the next two seasons. If I'm the Patriots, I trade him in a heartbeat for anyone that's willing to take him because I think that cap number is terrible. But I don't think anybody around the league is going to look at his tape from this season and sign up for that. The thing with knee injuries that are described as, quote, ticking time bombs, was that how Breer phrased it? They don't yeah. get better with time. And he he just looked like he had no explosiveness this year. The only game where he really even showed up was Pittsburgh, right? And that was like such a flash in the pan. That was the exception, not the rule. I just don't I don't see anyone that would give up anything. And even like even the Patriots were like trying to clean the books. Right. And they're like, all right, Juju and a fifth for a seventh. I still don't think you're going to get other teams interested in that just because of where his tape is at right now. And I, and I think another name like like that is, is Devontae Parker. I, I sort of like I'm still a little bewildered. They extended him last summer. And, and I think oh. they did that to make him happy after they were flirting with DeAndre Hopkins. And really, Chris, it kind of blew up in their face. So DeAndre is it, it's, it's 31. He, you know, he signed through 2025. If you were to cut him pre-June 1st, you owe $6.3 million and you only clear 140000 I mean, which says the Patriots aren't going to cut him. If you were to cut him post-June 1st, it doesn't get much better. You owe... 4.7 million on the cap and you only clear 1.7. However, to get out of this Devontae Parker contract, you need to trade him. Pre-June 1st, it's very possible you clear up 3.1 million or you, I'm sorry, you clear up 3.3 and you only owe 3.1. If you were to trade him post-June 1st, you actually clear 4.9 million 
on the salary cap and you only owe 1.5, you would clear up 5 million next year. I mean, if they could trade Devonte Parker at any point, Chris, I think they do it. And even like the trade pre June 1st, like three point three million dollars on your salary cap is a lot of money if you're clearing three first to sort of get rid of a receiver who hasn't been all that great. Yeah, I mean, I, I again take pretty much any trade offer I can get if I'm the Patriots right now. Um, but that extension last number is still one of the most like perplexing. And it's like you said, where maybe Bill thought that he was trying to like mend fences after the Hopkins stuff. When has Bill ever cared about that? You know, with somebody with a receiver like Parker, I think he just really liked the player and I, I never saw it. I don't think it's ever really panned out. And so I would definitely trade Devontae Parker for just about anything, but I do not think people are going to be knocking at the door with those offers. No, it's, it's a tough spot for the Patriots to be in because they, they need a better receiver room. And the problem is two of their highest paid guys, it's really hard to get rid of those contracts, right? As, as we said here, you can't cut them good because you're going to owe a ton of money. Really, what they have to do is look for trade partners. I mean, it's going to have to be something. It, honestly, if you have to give up, say, like a fifth or sixth and you only acquire, say, like a sixth or seventh, I might actually do it just to free up the cap space. I, I wonder if they would be creative. And, and it wasn't there was a quarterback, was he in Houston? And the, didn't the Texans trade like a second round pick to get rid of him? It was, I believe it was Brock Osweiler. Um, I'm pretty sure the Brock Osweiler story was the Texans essentially traded a second round pick to get out of that contract. So if I'm the Patriots, I would entertain trading uh, like a fifth, sixth, or seventh to get out of that contract just to bring in more guys. I mean, when we talked to Daniel Jeremiah, he said it was it was a good receiver class this year. You could find a receiver in rounds three or four that could, you know, could be a good player. And also this, the free agent class, it, it's okay. I think it's kind of top heavy, Chris, and we'll find out who's yeah. franchised. But like, I, I think the Patriots have to explore some creative avenues to sort of redo their receiver position, even if that means losing a deal, just to clear cap space. Yeah. And in trading either of those guys too, in addition to like the cap space, you're also opening up a roster spot for somebody else where, I mean, I've seen enough Parker at this point to know pretty much exactly what he is. Saw enough Juju this year. I, you know, I, th I think we kind of see what he is and what he's going to be moving forward. So why not give someone else those snaps? I, you know, it, it seems kind of like a no brainer to me. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you, you, if you find a trade partner for them, you know, you theoretically resign Kendrick Bourne, try to bring in a veteran that we talked about in our last podcast. And all of a sudden say like, whatever it is, say it's Calvin Ridley, Kendrick Bourne, Demario Douglas at a rookie. I don't hate it. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't hate it. I think you have, you have, that would, that would give me a better outlook than what you have right now. Yeah. I think you'd feel a lot better going into the season looking like that than the current wide receiver room. All right. So certainly some interesting days on the way. Thanks for following along and we'll catch you guys further on down the trail.